Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Boulder Skate 3. In this episode, I'm gonna share my multi-class build for Enchantment Wizard, and we are gonna multi-class it with Bard and Warlock. If you have watched my Enchantment Wizard video, I think you already know how strong and precise it is at controlling the enemies. At level 10 of Enchantment Wizard, you get the ability Split Enchantment, which allows you to target two targets with an enchantment spell that can normally target only one. It is very useful when you use your lower level spell slots. Your lower level slots are more cost effective when casting enchantment spells. Here, by multi-classing into Bard and a Warlock, I've created a build that can make nice use of this ability and save a lot of spell slots for protection spells. So this build I made is a Fire Realm Whisperer kind of setting that keeps dealing psychic damage while also imposing disadvantage on multiple enemies each turn without spending much. And by spending a spell slot, it can deal higher psychic damage and impose fear on those targets. The story I'm seeing here is a psychic bard who whispers horrible truths from the far realm to break the enemy's minds. This build has 10 levels of enchantment wizard, 1 level of bard, and 1 level of great old one warlock. With the Bard class, we can get a nice enchantment cantrip called Vicious Mockery. This will be our default attack throughout the game. It deals psychic damage and at the same time imposes disadvantage on the enemy's attack rolls. Starting from mid-game, we can use the spell Haste from the Wizard class, which allows us to act twice each turn as long as we maintain concentration on it. And thus, we can use Vicious Mockery on two targets each turn, and after we reach level 10 of Enchantment Wizard and get the ability Split Enchantment, we can target 4 enemies each turn with the Vicious Mockery. Then, with the Great Old One Warlock class, we can get a level 1 enchantment spell called Dissonant Whisper. You can see this spell as a stronger version of Vicious Mockery. It deals higher damage and can frighten enemies. A frightened enemy has disadvantage on both attack rolls and ability checks and cannot move. Dissonant Whisper can be upcast to increase its damage, but normally I don't use this spell just for the damage. I only use it when I really need to frighten some enemies. Otherwise, I only use Vicious Mockery. The reason is that it's not worth it for this build to spend a slot just for damage. It has better use of them. Besides this, we also get the spell Hex from the Warlock class. If you mark an enemy with Hex, your attacks deal additional necrotic damage to them, and you choose to impose disadvantage on one of their ability scores. We can choose Wisdom to make our enchantment spells stronger against them. If the enemy dies while hexed, you can hex a new target without spending another spell slot, as long as you still maintain concentration on it. And Hex is an enchantment spell too, so it also benefits from your split enchantment ability. You can hex two targets at once after you reach level 10 of Enchantment Wizard. But it requires concentration, so you can't use it and haste at the same time. Usually, I prioritize haste first, because the job of this build is to control as many targets as possible. Hex is for the situation where you are fighting fewer but tougher enemies. Given all the above, the most important thing about this build is its casting ability. You need it to increase your spell DC so that you can land your control spells on the enemies. So, when you search for equipment for this build, you should prioritize items that can increase casting ability and DC. Okay, now let's talk about the leveling strategy, when to level into each class, and what you can do in different stages of the game. I started this build with the Bard class to get Vicious Mockery ASAP. When originally allocating ability scores, we give the major bonus to Charisma and bring it all the way up to 17, which is the highest possible for now we are eventually get it to 20. This is to maximize our casting ability and performance in conversations. Then we give the minor bonus to dexterity and bring it up to 16. This is to increase our AC to make us better at dodging attacks. It's also to increase our initiative rolls so that we can act before most enemies and control them. Then we forego two strength to bring wisdom to 13. We'll make it 14 later in the game. Wisdom makes you better at sensing danger and noticing hidden things, which is valuable when exploring. And it also makes you hard to control by the most powerful control spells in the game. We leave constitution and intelligence unchanged at 10. This build doesn't need them very much. 
For the barred cane chips, first we choose a vicious mockery, of course. Besides this, we get friends. It gives you advantages on charisma checks in conversations, making you more powerful at influencing people. And it's from the enchantment school, so feels right for this build. For the starting spells, first we get speak with animals to get information from animals. This spell lasts a whole day without concentration, as long as the spell is still prepared. It's a ritual spell, which means if you cast it outside of combat, it doesn't consume your spell slot. Then we get Long Strider, which I think is a must-have for any party. It increases the target's moving distance for the whole day without concentration, as long as the spell is still prepared. It's a ritual spell too. Every morning, you can cast it on yourself, on your whole party, and on all the creatures you summoned. Then, Feather Fall. It gives your party more freedom when exploring the map. Then, Disguise Self. It allows you to assume a false identity. This is useful in places where a certain race has benefits. And the Bard class also gives you three charges of Bardic Inspiration each day. You can use a bonus action to give an ally a 1d6 bonus on their next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. This can be useful in some tough boss fights, especially in higher difficult modes. At level 2, we choose into the Warlock class and choose Great Old One as the subclass. This subclass has the passive ability Mortal Reminder. With this ability, your critical hits frighten enemies unless they succeed a wisdom saving throw. This build is not a critical build, so you are not gonna trigger this ability very often, but it's still nice to have. For the Warlock cantrips, first we get Eldritch Blast. This is a force damage cantrip. We can use it when the enemies are immune to our psychic damage and mind affecting effects. For now, Eldritch Blast only shoots one blast each time, but at character level 5, it becomes two blasts, and eventually at character level 10, it becomes three blasts. Then, Bone Chill. It deals ranged necrotic damage and prevents enemies from healing. For the Warlock spells, we get Dissonant Whispers and Hex, as we talked about earlier. Before we get Haste, we will keep using Hex on the enemies. Starting from level 3, we stick to the Wizard class. For the Wizard cantrips, we get 3 Utility cantrips. Because Wizard cantrips and spells use Intelligence as casting ability, and we are not gonna land many offensive spells with only 10 intelligence. We get Mage Hand to manipulate things from a distance, Light to illuminate things, and Minor Illusion to distract people. For the starting wizard spells, first we choose Shield. It's a must-have for any wizard build. It's a reaction that gives you another 5 AC when you need it, making you harder to be hit. Remember to untoggle your opportunity attack in case you waste your reaction on that and can't cast your protection reactions. Then, find familiar. This allows you to summon a creature into your party to help with combat and exploring. Once summoned, they'll be there until their hit points get reduced to zero. It's a ritual spell, and the summon spells don't need to stay prepared once the creature is summoned. Then, Enhance Leap. Enhance Leap and Feather 4 combined give your party even more freedom when exploring the map. Then, Mage Armor, a must-have for any wizard who doesn't wear armor. It sets your AC to 13, which is already higher than most light armors. You only need to cast it once each day, and it doesn't require concentration. It will last until long rest, or until you equip an armor, or until you remove it from your prepared spells. But this spell is not for now, because we don't have the slot to prepare it yet. We can use it starting from level 4. Now you've learned 6 spells from the wizard class, but at this point, you can only prepare 2 spells, because you only have 1 level in wizard and only a plus 1 intelligence modifier. Later, for every new level of wizard, you can prepare one more spell. So what I do with this is, I don't prepare pure utility spells like Enhance Leap. And when I need to use spells like this, I take off some spells that are only used in combat, then prepare those ones, then do the jobs, then prepare those combat spells back. This is what's good about multi-class into wizard. At level 4, we choose into the enchantment school and get our first special school ability, Hypnotic Gaze. It allows you to completely incapacitate an enemy once you succeed. You can keep maintaining this control each turn for as long as you want, without concentration. 
It seems a strong control, but it's more like a failsafe than a weapon, because you can only activate it with close range and only once each long rest. So I normally don't proactively use it to control enemies. Instead, I only use it when some enemy somehow got close to me. At this level, we can prepare one more spell. Now we can use Mage Armor. At level 5, we can learn the spell See Invisibility. This is one of the best abilities of a wizard. It lasts a whole day and doesn't need concentration. Besides this, I recommend Knock. This spell can unlock any lock, no matter its difficult class, unless the story forbids it. At level 6, we can choose our first feat. Here we choose Ability Improvement to increase our Charisma to 18 and Wisdom to 14, getting another plus one modifier for both of them. At this level, we can also learn two more spells. First, we choose Misty Step. It is useful both inside and outside of combat by teleporting for quite a distance. Then, I recommend Gust of Wind. It can push objects or clear clouds outside of combat. At level 7, we get to learn another powerful spell that every mage should learn, Counter Spell. This allows you to completely negate an enemy spell as a reaction. Counter Spell can negate any spell whose level is not higher than the spell slot you spent. If the spell's level is higher, you still get a chance to negate it, but you need to make an ability check. You get this spell from the wizard class, so you use your intelligence for that check. Besides, at this level we also get to learn haste, but we can't prepare it yet. We are prepare it starting from the next level. At level 8, we get our second special school ability, Instinctive Charm. And that is, when you get attacked, you can charm the attacker as a reaction and possibly stop the attack. But this is less effective than your shield spell. Instinctive Charm only affects one enemy and doesn't affect enemies who are immune to mind-affecting effects. Shield affects you for the entire turn, so as long as you can still afford the spell slot, always prioritize shield. Actually, at the present, I recommend you untoggle Instinctive Charm, because there seems to be a bug in both skill 3. Instinctive Charm sometimes contradicts with the shield spell, and it's happening to other melee protection reactions too. I'm not sure when this will be fixed. And at this level, we can prepare the spell Haste. Now we can target two enemies in one turn. At level 9, we can learn the spell Conjure Minor Elemental to summon another unit for your party, which is recommended for any mage build. At this level, we also have the luxury to learn and prepare a level 1 spell, False Life. This spell gives you some temporary hit points. This effect lasts a whole day, as long as you don't take damage and lose some of those hit points. So you only need to cast it at the beginning of the day. At level 10, we can choose our second feat. Here, we choose Ability Improvement to increase our Charisma to 20, the cap maximizing our casting ability. At level 11, we can learn the spell Conjure Elemental to summon a stronger unit for our party. At level 12, we get our final special school ability, Split Enchantment. At this level, we can also upcast the Conjure Elemental spell to summon the strongest units we can summon for our party. Okay, we have talked about how good this build is. Now let's talk about its weaknesses. The most obvious weakness of this build is that you rely too much on psychic damage and mind-affecting abilities. This makes you good against the living creatures, but weak against the undead and the constructions. These enemies are resistant or even immune to them. The other weakness is the problem of any enchantment mage. All the enchantment control spells target enemies' wisdom, so if your enemies have high wisdom, it will be hard for you to control them. But in these situations, you can still hex the enemies and then attack them with Eldritch Blast. But this build is not made around Eldritch Blast, so you are not gonna deal that much damage with it. And that is everything about this Varium Whisperer build. Hope you like it, and if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.